Crowder, with countless lawsuits and cease and desist, just a wonder Crowder is still on his feet. Here's the Fred Rogers estate, the Fred Rogers company. Mr. Rogers, of course, angry about Crowder's parody, looking to try his hand. Oh, boy, the brutality is just unbearable. And, oh, here is the Bob Ross estate. Apparently angry with Crowder's painting, Muhammad administration is now having a go. Oh, and this is just brutal. He's using every illegal tactic in the book. Bogus copyright claims, bogging down the channel. Fair use be damned. I tell you it's a tragedy if the lawyers allow this to go on any longer. Oh, no. It appears to be Mr. YouTube himself. Cenk Wieger of the Young Turks, well known to work directly with yeah, YouTube, is looking to take his yeah. turn. Hey, hey, you two, you never got me down. You never got me down, YouTube. You never got me down. You never got me down, YouTube. Hey, hey, Mud Club, you never got me down. You never got me down. Join Mug Club today for $89 annually or try it mugless for $9 a month. You can sign up at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club for the entire catalog, including Nick DiPaolo, Brian Callen, the Hodge Twins, Mr. Guns and Gear, and of course, Alex Jones, along with 100% more of this show. Go to nickdip.com and sign up on Mug Club. It'll be the best thing you do. Uh, former President Donald Trump endorsed McConnell. Oh, I bet you he's proud of it. I was drunk. This is Mitch uh, showing you the charisma. But Arr! one of life's most underappreciated talents. Is that his wife behind him? Is to Asian know broad in your late hundreds. When it's time yeah. to move on to life's next chapter. Your next chapter is six feet <laughs> under, Frank. He's the OG. He has his own show here in Mug Club, uh, Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Nick DiPaolo. That's okay. You're not here for the sip, so we're going to get right into it. Um, <laughs> added some promo because uh, it's, a, it's a busy day. The verdict just came in. Before anything else, the verdict just came in regarding Donald Trump. Colorado does not have the authority to take that man off the ballot. That is big. That is one step closer toward having a free and fair election. Although we do have the most free and fair elections ever. Okay. Freest and fairest. Freest and fairest of all time. Not sure how you judge that. So we'll be discussing that. Uh, of course, Women's History Month is, is kicking off. And then there's also been this, this uh, theme now that uh, the left has been, I guess I should say talking point, they've been parroting, that uh, white rural rage is a problem. That if you are a white rural American, you are anti-democratic and you are the problem with this country. So this is what they're trying to build up going into the election. They're trying to make sure that this sitting president, some people say former president, some people say sitting president, that President Trump cannot be legitimately voted for in this election. That's something they're trying. And then the next step is if you vote for him, you are actually racist and conspiratorial. It's a two-pronged approach. I don't think any of it is going to work, so we are going to hit that live. Uh, but if at any point today you see this, head on over to Rumble. But the good news is we're allowed to discuss elections now. We are. Because okay. they're preparing to claim that the election was stolen from them. This time around. Yes. That's true. By if, white people. White. 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 Comment below. Rage do you against. say white or white? Do you say who? Or well, who white. you do? I don't know how. You do you say? 
Do you say wheat thins? Wh- what? When or when? Wheat thins. Why? Why do some people? I realize I have friends who say <laughs> white, no but they don't use it all the time. All right. <laughs> you want to know? Watch the show. It's live weekdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. If you don't see us here on YouTube, we are on Rumble. We are on Mug Club. Uh, we are on Mug Club every day. Weekdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. Number two, Captain Morgan, CEO. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm a little bit happy about this verdict coming down. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. It's you want to keep your job. It shouldn't. I'm. It shouldn't have even been there. Okay. That's why I'm a little bit happy. I'm I'm pissed, and I'm kind of okay. Fine. There's a sycophant I, I know and love. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm he always tries. To, Gerald always tries to bridle, even if he's passionate. He's like, you know, I'm relatively. It's a clown. Get mad. He's come from Get mad. You don't need to control your rage. Your rage is perfect. And uh, when Where you hear your rage, yes. When you hear this, you know him, you love him. Most of all, you thank him for his service uh, in third chair today. You can follow him on uh, Instagram, underscore Firestein. Josh Firestein, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I had fun in Des Moines. Met some crazy people. Yeah. Met some cool people. Did you drink? Oh, I drank. I got real drunk. <laughs> He's in Des Moines. I got real drunk and met a guy named Rusty who uh, who went around questioning Rust. everybody's military. It was right a crazy here. old Did he man. question your military service? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bunch of times. But we hugged it out, and I okay. pinched his nipple, and it was all right. Good, 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 good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't do my bit. <laughs> so before we continue with that, because I'm uh, buying a uh, mission control some time, today marks our first show in March, which is also Women's History Month. And the theme for this year is women who advocate for equity, oh, diversity, and inclusion, according to the National Women's History Alliance, because that's the thing. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, now when the lower third goes away, it's just awkward. It's just me. <laughs> it's awkward both times. And honestly, my because of the surgery, everything shifted. Uh huh. My nipples used to be here. Now they're here. Oh, you got a couple of shifty nipples. I got a couple of shifty nipples. <laughs> <laughs> you got a shifty nip, you just like Rusty. His was, Can you play it again? Because I feel like I want to get that one back. <laughs> no, it's just, Women's <laughs> History Month. Can we not? Yes. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. What? See, now my hands are here. But That's why a country you? star. Did you know that? Yes. Country music legend. She invented Beyonce. country music. Yeah. Yeah. And my hands are above the covers where you can see them. Mom. Now, <laughs> Ew. some fast facts for you, because we honor the women who, uh, some people refer to them as women, I refer to them as the best among us. In 1981, Congress established the second week of March as National Women's History. Uh, in 1987, uh, it's my birthday, Congress expanded the week to a whole month. In 2024, uh, women still won't shut the hell up about it. And they have contributed a lot to the world, though, women, like Amelia Earhart. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's likely. First female pilot to whatever, whatever. Then uh, Marie Curie. That is oh, bad idea. a far huh. clearer Photoshop than the first one. <laughs> where that goes. And, of course, uh-huh. who can forget Joan of Arc? It seems women are most famous for dying. <laughs> for a good cause. Them? I mean, like, these women are all famous, but they all met horrible deaths. It's true. Wouldn't it be better to honor the first woman to not crash? Maybe it's the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah, it's the patriarchy. They built a plane that was going to crash in the middle of her flight across the Atlantic. Well, the pa- And by the way, during plane. run-through, he's trying to play cool. Gerald said, uh, wasn't Joan of Arc beheaded? I was like, didn't you watch, did you watch Wishbone? And then I was like, what the heck is Wishbone? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that episode no. of Joan of Arc, Wishbone? I don't know Wishbone. Thank oh, you. My lord. I know it's Canadian. The wishbone. Well, it's that's why I know Joan of Arc. <laughs> because of Wishbone. I, I fitted noodles so much. He's like...
Trump's fault for fighting bullshit charges, bullshit arguments and rulings. 9 to 0. 9 0. Bullshit. Think about this. They just said, what about the people who don't want Trump to be uh, eligible for the nomination? Well, what about, wow, what do people do when they see that uh, not everybody has the ability to protect their name? The money. That's what he's saying. I believe Dahmer pled not guilty. This indictment that they were going to be up against it on a timeline and that there were going to be appeals, in both interlocutory appeals, which are intermediate appeals that could be Im immediately taken up to the Supreme Court, and then appeals yeah. after the fact after judgments rendered. So, you know, that's part of the process. You know, the justice system doesn't spin fast. This one in particular, though, given where mm. Jack Smith's case was, when it was filed, is probably moving along faster than most other federal cases. Heck, in Philadelphia, we have a, yeah. we have a number of criminal It's almost like it would move faster so because it's relevant to a national election, Humpty. Mr. Dumpty, please. All right, Jim Schultz, uh, thank you very much. I want to go back to Joan. Uh, who's on set with us. And Jim, I'm getting now, Mr. Schultz had a great fall. They are putting him back together again. <laughs> <laughs> Best wishes. Let me read you some more here uh, from the well, this, Supreme So th let me just set what you're about to read up. So, yes, it was a 9-0, but the three liberal justices didn't support it for all of the right reasons. Right. They said, although we agree that Colorado cannot enforce Section 3, we protest the majority's effort to use this case to define the limits of federal enforcement of that provision because we would decide only the issue before us we concur only in the judgment. In other words, we want to give ourselves a back door, but we know the game we here. Just, you just can't do it in this particular case. But maybe down the road, if you do it a little differently, we'll be happy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. What do you? What do you even? Why would you qualify it? Be You're supposed to be impartial. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's supposed to be, be more deceptive. Uh, let's see if anyone on CNN actually addresses the constitutionality and says, "Yeah, uh, this, there's a reason it's 9 -0. Amplify disagreement with stridency. We should be taking the temperature down rather than bringing it up. Yeah. But you can see why the liberals Donald did this. Donald Trump, by the way, does not believe in that. No. no. He, and, and he, yes, that's right. It's his fault. It's his fault that the Supreme Court ruled that you tried to railroad him unconstitutionally. Are you starting to get the picture? Donald Trump wants to bring the temperature up. You tried to put the man in jail, and now you, now you did, in certain districts, take him off the ballot. You tried to do it to set a precedent so that the Supreme Court could say, we can take him off the ballot, and you still have other bullshit cases. You still are trying to uh, indict him on insurrection. You still Think, think about it, it's, but it's Donald Trump's fault. It's, it, it's like being mugged and someone going, hey, can you, hey, that victim's fighting back. <laughs> they can't. They kind of are doing that. It's yes. like the ceasefire thing. It's like you, yeah. you basically you started a war with Donald Trump. He's better at fighting this war than you are, and you're pissed off that you're getting your butt kicked right now. Whoa, 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 whoa! Take whoa. the Everybody temperature down. Fire. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you stabbed me. Hey, <laughs> yeah, hey, look. Fine. Let's not bicker about ooh stabbed ooh. I'm still bleeding. Well, not a lot. <laughs> let's they take the temperature yeah. down. Yeah, chill out, dude. Just let us indict you. Everyone, <laughs> chill. For what about early like voting? Right. Huh? Was Trump on a ballot in early voting in Colorado? So that the only people have a, a chance to vote for him is Tuesday? Right. That's if bullshit. he's back on in time. If yeah. he's back on yeah, in time. If yeah, if they can print him in time. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's the see. Majority, the six justices other than the three liberals, say only Congress. The only way this can work is if Congress They're passes right. a law saying, here's how we will determine whether someone is or is not an insurrectionist. The three liberals say, you didn't have to go that far. It would have been enough to just say, <laughs> states can't do it, and then let everyone else figure out. Boy, are they trying to spin this. It's like, this guy's is not a total loss. Come All on. is well! <laughs> you didn't have to go that far. Gives them permission. So basically, this is what about sad, a dude. prosecution of exactly. Donald Trump that's exactly. or another presidential candidate for insurrection? Exactly right. So this, yeah. the, the liberals say Congress basically, in then? that's a yeah. perfect example. So the liberals yeah. say, take this scenario where someone were successfully prosecuted for insurrection, the liberals say that should be enough, but the conservatives, six conservatives, say no. You still just need Congress. No, let me just you need Congress to do it because a state, a, an impo this is the best example of why states cannot be trusted to do this because they tried to do something illegal. You guys gloated about it. We'll get to it in just a second. You illegally removed a guy from the ballot in your state. Other states started following suit. This is why we can't trust you to properly adjudicate this. That is the Congress, that's Congress's By the way, role. This is enough. When they say the left, uh, no, freest and fairest elections. Again, you, can't, you don't just ask yourself what happens right now when you have a system of checks and balances. Right now, the check, the balance, was the Supreme Court. Three branches of government, right? They act as checks and balances against each other. 
The left doesn't want checks and balances. No. And so it's not what happens. It's what would happen if the left, if the DNC, had power completely unfettered. The election wouldn't be an election. It would not be an election. It would be a coronation of someone that nobody wants, Joe Biden. Imagine this. If Colorado had their way, what they were trying to do is, okay, Colorado sets a precedent. Great. Illinois, a district in Illinois. Sorry, county follows suit. And all other states, because Colorado justified it, yep. that don't want Donald Trump on the ballot, they can do this. Now, guess what? All it takes? Three swing states. Yep, exactly. To do that. And Colorado, once upon a time, was considered somewhat of a swing state. It's yeah. kind of purple. Michigan, Pennsylvania, let's say Ohio, Wisconsin, they change it. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe Georgia. Maybe Arizona. Just a few of them say, well, Colorado did it. And if the timing was wrong, oh, my God. Imagine if they did this in a national election Jeez. just two months before national election. Yeah. If they had their power completely unfettered, do you think that's a free and fair election? It doesn't. Well, sure, we have a Hunter Biden story last time that changed the election. Sure, you have mail-in ballots, which, is, which are, of course, a gross violation of your constitutional rights as a taxpaying citizen who wants to ensure a duly elected uh, candidate be, is actually the one who runs for office and is elected. All of those are, but if just this, just the Colorado ruling, they were trying to game the system so that you wouldn't even be given the opportunity to vote for the guy who fucking today beats Joe Biden. Just to be clear, they know it. They did this when, Do I believe this happened when Donald Trump was five points ahead of national polls. In other words, we know we lose. How do we stop it? has nothing to do with constitutionality, has nothing to do with who you want to elect, if nothing else. They did this to try and set the stage for swing states to be able to do it. And if not for the Supreme Court, it would have worked where the guy who, if the election was held today, wins, would be ineligible. That's it. Never let them gaslight you into questioning election results because this happened in the open. It didn't work. Don't forget that they tried it. Absolutely. And and we do have some of the MSM gloating, by the way. So they understand what this what was at stake, what you just said. It yeah. would potentially keep him from being president, right? We have a bit of a montage of them. Good. We had a whole show planned, my friend, uh, and that is completely <laughs> upended. This is what we're talking about now. I am in front of festooned with papers in front of me. <laughs> there are there are very few sort of um, you know magic spells that you cast that um, make a make a complex and difficult problem go away. I was thrilled and, and proud to be uh, in America. The opinion by the the Colorado Supreme Court was a masterful judicial opinion. I was very pleased that the rule of law uh, was vindicated by the Colorado Supreme Court in this way. Looks like a Muppet on a spin cycle. All right. <laughs> Each one of those guys knows the law and they know that this is not how you do this. Absolutely. It's and gals. It's 1034 <laughs> Eastern on Monday, March 4th. So remember where you were when this happened. Don't let them move on. Do not let them move on because so many, I see this all the time. People go, wait a second. Did I dream the mail-in voting in Pennsylvania thing? Wait a second. Did I dream Georgia, the, the pipes at night when they said a burst. pipe burst? And then yeah. we saw the video. Mm -hmm. And then it became about the fact that they weren't actually suitcases. They were Pelican cases of, of, of votes. Did I dream that? You didn't dream it. This happened. Remember where you were. It's 935 Central, 1035 Eastern, March 4th. Remember where you were when the Supreme Court said, yeah, you can't. You can't do it. We, we, we see it. We like that you were trying to remove them from the ballot. Maybe there's a different way to do it, but it's unconstitutional. If they would have had their way. Today, they would have had their way today. You don't get to vote for the person who you have already decided should be the next president of the United States. Do not ever let them. Do not ever let them gaslight you into forgetting and do not let them ever tell you that you're a conspiracy theorist for questioning the results of the election. They tampered today. Don't forget it. You didn't dream it. It happened. We have, uh, I guess, a clip from MSNBC when the Colorado case happened. Right. Just to give you an idea of what they were talking about then. All right. Ultimately, it's up to states how they choose to appoint the electors to the Electoral College. Uh, and it's also up to states, uh, as far as we know, as of now, to be able to have ineligible people kept off their ballots. <laughs> I mean, ineligible people yeah. off the what? They're trying to. So they're trying to. She's still we, calling we, it ineligible? Well, this, this is this prior is back to, the, to the verdict, yeah. right? So this is just basically going back and saying that states have a right to keep people off. But he also was not ineligible then. Just No, he wasn't. He was never ineligible. He's the never state been just ineligible. basically said that he was. It was right. a 4-3 Supreme Court decision in the state of Colorado that basically said, yes, he can be kept off, right? That's what was appealed. That's what went right. up to the, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States. 
if you are in another place, another state, this affects you because your let's say that you guys vote for Donald Trump. Like Stephen said, it doesn't matter if three swing states don't even have him on the ballot. That's the election. It's done. It doesn't matter if he has overwhelming support in the rest of the country, except for obviously the big blue states that are obviously going to go for Biden or whoever's up for the, the nomination with a D next to their name. They basically stole your vote. They nullified your vote. This was the argument that was made by Paxton and a bunch of other people, a number of states, about Pennsylvania changing their law. Mm-hmm. And it was, a, it was the right argument to make. The problem is they, they didn't have standing is what they said. You should have standing when your votes are basically nullified. Yes. That's what they were trying to do with this. They were trying to keep them off the ballot for tomorrow. And, and this is how you end up with an actual civil war, a revolution. Yes. Because let's say <laughs> you have a candidate like Donald Trump who has more than 60% of the, the, the public vote. And a huge portion of them, because they live in certain states, were not able to vote. You can lie to them all you want. Guess what? That sting is not something people forget. And they yeah. say, well, we really do have a rigged system. I wasn't even able to vote for anyone I want <laughs> because you decided to act outside of your authority. Where you would really have, where you would really have a pressure cooker uh, would be if after the election you would have like a national scenario yeah. as to what happened with Pennsylvania. For those of you who for, who, yeah. who've forgotten with Pennsylvania, basically it was regarding mail-in voting and it was brought before the court that it was a violation of the, con- the, the Pennsylvania Constitution. They said, well, hold on Which a second. We were doing this mass mail-in voting and the court said, we, we, sure, but we don't know. Nothing's happened yet, so you don't have standing. Right. And then after the election, the court said, yeah, they did do it. And yes, it was a violation of the Pennsylvania uh, Constitution, but the election's already done, so it's a moot point. <laughs> If this would have happened after the election, yeah. where the court said, you know what, they didn't have the right to, but the election is done, that in combination with a candidate who has the majority of public support, that would be, I do think, when people say, what do you yeah. think it would take, I think that would lead to violent conflict in the United States. I really do believe that, that we were that close to it. Yeah. It would only take about three more steps. You can comment below. If I'm not saying that I, I'm encouraging that. I'm saying I do believe if you were to... Hold the gun to my head. If Donald Trump is taken off the ballot in key swing states and after the election, the Supreme Court says, yeah, that was a violation, but the election is done, so we're not going to do anything about it. I believe that you would actually have violent civil conflict in this country. Absolutely. And I'm a bit disappointed in what I'm about to ask you to do, but Donald Trump did respond. Oh, you'll see why I'm disappointed. We'll we'll bring it up on the screen there. I don't know if it's in the map yet. Um, Oh, this always can you do? He said, big win for America. But can you do me a favor and give us like what you think he would say? Three exclamation marks. Look. (laughs) The Supreme, the, the Colorado court, the dirty diaper court is what they call them. That's what they say. Because the judges I've heard wear diapers and they don't change them frequently. Infrequent changing of the diapers. But the Supreme Court said no to the dirty diaper court. I'm going to rule against because they're the best Supreme Court. Frankly, that's what people say. I would never say that. I'm impartial. They say it's the best Supreme Court. Great tits, Elena Kagan. <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> Fantastic. Big win for America. Three exclamation points. I was disappointed and it was so short. I was like, oh, come on. I feel like he usually would obviously write something more, but he was just so overjoyed. He was like, well, I don't know. It shot their wife. Killed you. Big win for America. <laughs> <laughs> but we guys like that. Much. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so I mean, he did. He put some other stuff out. You know, obviously he's gonna he's gonna campaign on this. He's gonna fundraise off of this. It's a big deal. Of course he obviously. is. Yeah. So I, I <laughs> as well he should. Nobody has been uh, nobody has been more targeted than this guy. And so you said we dodged a bullet, partic- a little bit here. We have about ten more to dodge. Uh, yeah, I know. Between You're now right. and election day, that's the real issue that we're facing right now. And if you watch CNN, we didn't even put up MSNBC. They're probably lighting their hair on fire over there. But if you watch CNN. What you see is supposed to be kind of the more middle of the road. It's not opinion about this. And they're saying, well, these states should have the right to do this. I can't believe that they would do that. I, I, it's crazy. So I, I'm a little frustrated by it. I, I hope we dodge the rest of the bullets. We'll see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to. Is, uh, 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 Stephen? Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I just got a message from corporate. They said no more booze on display during the show. We can't just, Sam, you can't just barge in like that. And the, the booze, the booze is, is fine. They've been here. It, that's been here for years. Uh, yeah. Who's corporate? I, I apologize. No time to explain. I gotta just take care of this right now. What? All right. I, I love that song. Just sing. Are you Sam? Are you done? Just a second. Just gotta do part two real quick. Wait. What? The, what? Oh, what are you putting up there, Sam? Sorry about that. 
can't see. What oh, is that? What is that? You know, actually, there's a Patriot. You know what? That actually doesn't That's, look. Have Patriot supply? I'm yeah. surprised we didn't do that earlier. That doesn't. It's better than booze. Your does. box might fall. It doesn't apart, look that bad. Thank you, Sam. Thank oh, you, Sam. I'm so sorry about that. Two hands under. But, thank you, yeah, Sam. Underneath. Actually, that Don't jump. Is exactly what I would be saying to Sam if he had a soul. Yeah. Get out. Get out. Leave. 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 Leave, Sam. Now. Go. Put the booze in my office. Yes. Okay. Do I need to do a read? <laughs> Is it prep with Crowder? Prepare with Crowder. Yeah. Prep with Crowder. Prep with Crowder. Prep with Crowder. Prep with Crowder. What's the sixty percent off? Huh. Huh. Oh, it's four week kit. Wow. Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Four, four, four week food supply kit. We have a bunch of them here. Uh, which, hey, you know what? You might need if you end up with there a you go. scenario. Right there. Oh yeah, sixty percent off a four week kit at prepwithcrowder.com. We have a bunch of them here, and if you end up with a crap hits the fan scenario because they decide to uh, delegitimize the duly elected president of the United States. Good for you to have some dried food. Let's go to CNN really Time quickly. Out. Can somebody tell me if it's sixty percent off or sixty dollars off? Because that's a difference, that's right? Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars off. off for a week kit. Dollars that's fifteen per week. It's not a mundane that's, detail, uh, Michael. Oh, you You're like good that? at math. Division. I'm teaching my daughter because her teacher doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that well, sucks. I, but you're her teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to <laughs> CNN. <laughs> or a state official. But, Paula, the timing of this is really important. Mm. I want to look ahead, though, because Oof. this case was quickly seized upon by the Supreme Court. For yes, seized upon. Hearing the Supreme the Court seized the opportunists. It's not like the Colorado court seized Upon a candidate who the people wanted, just, is it me? Is it me? Please comment below. Hit the like. It helps with the algorithm. We're still here on YouTube. Go to, but please do. Like, this is one of those days. It's important yeah. that this gets out to as many people. Is it just me? Or this idea that seizing upon, oh, this man does not want to, he wants to, he wants to, to dial up the temperature. And not everyone, this man is going to drag this out. Is, do, 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 do you see what happens when you are incapable of admitting fault, taking accountability, or acknowledging the truth. They are incapable of it. The Supreme Court seized it out of necessity. So yes. we were all worried that the Constitution would be violated by rogue state courts. Exactly. And we're hoping that the Supreme Court simply stepped in to ensure that there was no violation. They are furious that there's been a ruling that you cannot violate the Constitution of the United States. Think, think, think about those two different worlds. That's where common ground can't exist. It can't. Not with people like this. They sound like a husband blaming the wife for cheating on her. Right. Or the wife blaming the husband for cheating on her in a dream that she had. Right. <laughs> even, yeah, even more accurate. <laughs> they believe that there is, no, there is no limit, there is no carve-out ahead of an election when they will not take steps in a criminal case where charges have already been filed. Because, you know, sometimes the Justice Department right. tries not to do anything too close to an election. Charges have been filed. There have been no convictions. Very clear. For the first time on Friday, they said that doesn't apply here. So they're willing to start this in September or October. So the big question is now, all right, the Supreme Court will hear arguments on April 22nd. Will they only take a month like they did here to solve a, a, a massive question? Or will they wait until the end of the term, which is their custom? Now here, clearly they were right, right under the Hold on a second. Pause. Supreme wait till the end of the term. What term? Where does that put us? Do they, mean, do they mean Joe Biden's term? No, 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 no. They mean the term for the Supreme Court. They basically Supreme have Court. kind of a season where they right. kind of meet, they discuss it. They Do we know when rulings. that term would end, guys? How close would that put us to an election? And how much would that affect the primary? Just think about th these words are pivotal. Are they going to only a month to solve a massive? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Why would we fault the Supreme Court for only taking a month if it's a lower, if it's a state court who only took a day? Or only took a week. The fault is with the Supreme Court for taking potentially four to 30 times the amount of time to, to undo the problem that was created for another court who did it with great haste. Also, it's been three years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, supposed crime that he's not charged for. Think about yeah. the term ga <clears throat> this morning. This is it. This is gaslighting 101. And I hate that term. It's overused. In this case, I can't, if the Supreme Court is, they're trying to imply that Donald Trump, you, the voter, and the Supreme Court are being imprudent. When they are the people who tried to keep a man who would win today off the ballot who has been convicted of no crime. And they've done it very quickly. <laughs> yeah, and the, the presidential immunity thing is what they're talking about. Right. That we heard in late April. If it, it went with that calendar, it'd be towards the end of June that we would get a verdict. Oh, okay. Right? So 
Uh, I, I don't. So between now and June, you could have other states try and if they hadn't had this ruling today, meaning in their world, other states could have said, oh, because of this uh, scenario, because of the immunity here, we can take them off the ballot and that could affect the primaries. Well, a, a lot of it could be affected, but I think the primaries will be settled by then. Basically, what they're saying is that he wouldn't even be able to run in the general. Mm-hmm. Right. So that would be the big issue, because that's really where the battle is. The RNC can kind of do some things to kind of figure this out if some states. I mean, if Nikki Haley gets, you know, three D.C. swamp votes, who really cares? Right. But it's the precedent that it sets. Precedent. <laughs> precedents. Can't remember which one it is. Yeah. It's a precedent that it sets for future elections, but also the general is where it's at. So if you are going to fight over something, it's making sure that Donald Trump has the ability to run in the general as the nominee, which he will obviously be. Or that you're fighting over whether any of these other charges should even exist in the first place. The documents handling case, the Georgia case, uh, obviously the stuff that happened in New York where he was. They're just going after every Think single of angle the they Georgia possibly case. can. The Georgia the, case Georgia, is stupid. They're saying Georgia case, if I'm not mistaken, that's what they're trying to say. He tried to overturn the tried election. To, yes, he was trying to tell him to find hey, votes. He tried to overturn the election. Watch us as we try and overturn an election preemptively. The only thing that's being overturned is that judge by the prosecuting attorney. Hey, now. Oh. Nice. That was sexual. Yeah, yeah it was. Fanny Willis is uh, yeah. she's, she's got a Fanny. Hey, you know what? Yeah, Fanny. Stop it. No, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. Uh, well, her Fanny is angry. in working condition. We all know that. <laughs> I am angry. You know what? Hey, I'm done. I'm done with. Uh, I think all of you should be done with. This is why I hate the term gaslighting. Or they say narcissist. If you look in a mirror yeah. right now, everyone's a pop psychologist. You have an anger problem. You have a. Ra- you should be enraged. <laughs> Yeah. You should be angry. There's a problem with being angry all the time if it's unwarranted. This is they had a national day of rage because Donald Trump was elected. They had a transgender day of vengeance, which is, by the way, it's a day that just happened to coincide, I believe, to the day, if not give or Very take one day it. with the Nashville shooting a radical <laughs> transgender extremist. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a little bit of rage when you have people completely trying to subvert a constitutional representative republic. I, I I think it's fine. Yeah, and, and by the way, they said Donald Trump wants to turn the temperature up. Donald Trump has not yet begun to turn the temperature up. If you guys continue to go after him the way you are, like you have no idea what you're doing to our system of democracy, right? <laughs> like I understand what we are. I understand that we're a democratic republic. So I say that this loose you have no idea. When you start to say that black is white and gray is green and blue is yellow, then people start to go, "Well, I can't trust anything that you say anymore." I can't not trust your analogy thing. because you're colorblind. It's all colors. It's not yeah. <laughs> They're all the same for me. That was a little bit of an easter egg for somebody yes. later on. <laughs> and it's not it's not Donald Trump's uh temperature that they need to be worried about being turned up. It's the rest of us. Right. Yes. Well, and like recently, me personally, I am not a Donald Trump fan. I have said right. that so many times, but don't you take my right to vote for him away? Yeah. Yes. Dude, you just made you just made me so angry. Yeah, and that's, there's a, there's millions of me. Yes, out there. And, Absolutely and right. We're gonna, somebody, we're gonna vote for him. And good point. It's a no. It's a great point. I wasn't even like I wasn't a Trump guy in the primary, and then in this primary, I was undecided. I said, you know what? Because of what they're doing, I kind of feel like we owe them one because of the railroading. Yeah. There's definitely a bit of that too, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you're making me angry. You're gonna take a right away from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you're gonna make me vote for this long fingered. <laughs> Which, by the way, you know, how many donors did she lose today? Yeah, I know. You want DC? I'm out. Yeah. There's the one guy who's it. hoping that he can get laid by Nikki. He's like, not me. I'm still here. I'll go with you to the ends of the earth, Nikki. <laughs> I'm forever yours. <laughs> hey, they shifted a little bit. You got to go more to the left. Yeah. <laughs> I'm forever <There> you yours. <laughs> <laughs> I am Nikki Haley's baby. <laughs> Let's get it on. Start singing. <laughs> Typical Nikki Haley fan. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, Democrat. That's the donor left. All right. Do we want to go one more scene and then we'll go to white rural rage? Yeah. We got to beat him at the ballot box, and that may motivate our base. No. And Olivia, what about the fact that the Supreme Court did not take up whether he was an insurrectionist? Well, I think that's an because interesting no other question, court did. and I think it's interesting the way they sort of ra- laid it out. Um, some of them said, you know, this is really a question for Congress. Uh, they should write the legislation, and I'm like, well... Former advisor okay, to Mike Pence so and professional puffer fish, Olivia Troy. They should cut back on their bagel. Serving in Congress and support Consumption. the insurrectionists, right? I mean, that's a that's an interesting question right there. So I think they didn't want to they didn't want to broach that at all. Yeah. All right. Well, I wish we had more time. We're going to keep the conversation going. Uh, you have all time. the time in the world. You're a 24 hour news station and you offer uh, uh, nothing. Oh, my gosh. Hey, so but, uh, uh, Trump did 12 hours ago rip into Nikki Haley. If you want 
that a clip. Quote. We can Ooh. Or a quote. Well, no quote. He's 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 more of a quotes guy, right? Okay. Now. All right. Let's see what it's up to you though. I mean, I'll read if you want. I'll see what it says. Do it. Oh my god. Right, hold on, I'm gonna need a sip for this one to just you know prepare yourself. Right. <laughs> listen, listen, frankly, Bird Brain is a loser. Record low performance in virtually every state. DeSanctus easily beat her in Iowa from a very distant second place. And then she ran up to the podium before he had a chance to do so and claimed victory. <laughs> What scenario? <laughs> I enjoy watching the bird <laughs> disavow her pledge to the RNC in her statement that she would never run against President Trump. That's me. <laughs> Hold on. In parentheses and quotes, a great president. Well, <laughs> well, she ran. She lied. And she lost big, <laughs> all caps. <laughs> I love how you put President Trump, a great president, in quotes like someone else said it. And he's just hearing it from the other room. He's like, like, oh, a great president. They said it. It's like a little kid who keeps like reminding you that ice cream exists. <laughs> <laughs> so that maybe you'll buy them ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I love how you went from bird brain to the bird. The bird. The bird. <laughs> I think it I think it's better. The bird is better. The reason that the bird is better is because if people say it, they'll look at her and just go, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you see? The bird. That's why people say it. I would never say that. They call her the bird. That's Nikki Haley. Do you see it? Do you see the bird? He says he sees the You're a bird. <laughs> he says it's more like an owl to me. I have a video. I need to give it. I need to give it to the production team this weekend. I saw an owl, a huge owl. I thought it was a bobcat really? tree, in a tree, and there were all these crows surrounding it. Do crows attack owls? And this owl <laughs> flew off, and it was so heavy it kind of swooped down. I felt like I was Attenborough in the Nature Channel. I got it, but you know the zoom on the <laughs> the zoom on the phone isn't that great. I've never seen an owl this size, and the crows were following it. I'm like, are the crows gonna all? Do they collectively attack the owl? Probably so to keep it away from their nests. I don't know. The crows surround the owl. And surround the owl. And this uh, is how a crow off. do. Research what? chimed in. They just wanted to say this is in parentheses and quotes because that's Nikki Haley's quote. Oh, yeah, okay. she said that right oh, at one point. Okay, <laughs> but she was yeah. like in his cabinet. That's right? not clear. <laughs> That is not clear at all. She was my little it. Indian bird in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My little condor. Yes. <laughs> With her big, beautiful wings. <laughs> fly, Nikki, fly. Albatross with the fingers, the wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> it was the name of the boat and the white squall. That boy got over his fear of heights. <laughs> Jeff Bridges was a great sailor. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this research, I love you guys, but they just sent me in something that said that crows just typically don't like owls. <laughs> <laughs> They're, it's they're working internet, out so that's there. Fine. It's just funny. It's like, it just that, that goes way back. It's a, just a general malevolent <laughs> sentiment. <laughs> it's like Asian hate crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez, black crows. Okay, just a bunch I get of crows it. in the subway right. pushing the owl on the third rail. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Take that, Gahul. <laughs> All right. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <that was> stupid. <laughs> For me. Just American oh, History X, that owl's in the shower, it's undoing, the crow picking off his towel. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a sketch. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Lock it up. So, <laughs> I am enraged. You should be enraged today. Certainly. Well, you should. Obviously, it's a victory lap, but know what's coming down the pike. It is enraging to see them trying to, let's be clear, wipe their ass with the Constitution. That is what the left is trying to do. And they want to guilt you. Guilt you. Because of your anger. Okay, so first step is try and get rid of the person who you want to vote for. Step two, if that doesn't work, is blame you for voting for him. So let's go to MSNBC authors uh, Tom Schaller and Paul Waldman uh, oh, decided, wow, to, baby. They decided <laughs> to promote their new book, White Rural Rage and Blame You for Everything. Why are white rural voters a threat to democracy at this point? They're the most racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-gay, <laughs> geodemographic group in the country. Anti -you, Second, I think. they're the most conspiracist group. QAnon support and subscribers, <laughs> right election denialism, COVID <laughs> denialism, and scientific 
skepticism, um, Obama birthers. Tough word. Third, anti-democratic sentiments. They don't believe in an independent press, free speech. Whoa. They're most likely to say the president really? should be able to act yeah. unilaterally without any checks from Congress or the courts or the bureaucracy. Right. They're also the most strongly white nationalist and white Christian nationalist. And fourth, they are most likely to dis- excuse or justify violence as an acceptable alternative to peaceful public discourse. So- Okay, so first off, if I happen to be the person they accuse me of being a a racist, xenophobic American, I wouldn't know which portion of that man to hate. There's too many. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know. Is he not white? Is he some kind of other religious ethnicity? It could, I have no idea. Is he a real Turk? But I know I don't like him. (laughs) So he's an old Turk, I guess. I don't know. So let me give you the population of of rural white Americans. It's about 66 million in America. And uh, I believe that white people make up about 75% percent, yeah. of rural America That's in terrifying. total. So we've done some pretty exhaustive <laughs> research here. And I will tell you, as it relates to white rural Americans being the most dangerous uh, among us, they might be onto something. You know they always find some way. Ah, I'm reminded why I hate white rural white guys. By the way, these two authors don't work for MSNBC. They just went on there to promote their book and to spew lies. Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, they're welcome. Yeah. So let's go through some of the show. There's so much to get through there. I mean, every single thing they said is, 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 and we'll provide all the references as we always do. Uh, Link in the description or you can go to loudoutscotter.com. False. So here's a claim (laughs) that they make. White rural Americans, racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, and anti-gay. The most, the most of those things. They're the most racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, and anti-gay. Okay. The truth is, obviously that's not true. How did Barack Obama get elected without... 43% of white voters voted for Barack Obama. Oh. And by the way, Obama outperformed Kerry by up to 12% in rural counties. Mm. So I know you'll say, that's just that's just uh, the cities. No, no, no. No, Barack Obama did better than other Democrats, meaning that there were plenty of white rural Americans who were willing to vote for a black president who right. turned out to be an awful socialist with a man for a wife. And <laughs> allegedly. Hey, allegedly. she's a woman now. True. Allegedly. My point is back then they couldn't know. Yeah. They didn't have their minority report Oracle who screeches the whole film and ruins it for the rest of us. I still think she's a hot lady. The other idea, she pulls off the short hair well. The other thing is enforcing <laughs> immigration laws and the border. It's, it, it's, it's clearly not. This is how they mix words. They try and say racist and then anti-immigrant. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Except racist. All right. We can dispel that myth anti-immigrant hold on have you delineated between legal immigrants and illegal immigrants they just toss it in there uh, here bill clinton himself state we are a nation of immigrants but we are also a nation of laws it is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years and we must do more to stop it it only became racist to Uh, support legal immigration once the Democrats realize that they could buy votes. Also, by the way, we're not talking anti-gay. We we just talked about Barack Obama. But now, um, let's think about this for a second. Donald Trump, love him or hate him, was the only president ever in the history of the United States to enter office as pro-gay marriage. (laughs) That's true. He has a long history being pro-gay marriage. Barack Obama was against it until for political (laughs) expediency, and he wanted to accuse all Republicans of being homophobic, right. then he said, no, 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 change my mind. Because <laughs> I was getting all wee weed up. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> so think about that. You've got the first Ew. black president elected by white people, and then you've got the first pro-gay marriage president elected by white people. What they mean is you being anti-groomer, anti-drag queen yeah, story yeah, hour, anti-pornography books in school. Anti-queer like me, books being read to preschoolers, that that is anti-gay. Showing sexual acts in graphic detail as cartoons for yeah. kids. That's that's what we're talking about right here. And by the way, gays are the most forgotten, oppressed class in the history of the United States. No one cares at all about gays anymore. It's the T <laughs> at the end of the alphabet soup that we have concerns about because they're coming after our kids. Yes, but they add Take to the alphabet soup, it. and then by proxy, you hate them too. No, yes. you have I a don't. problem with one thing you don't hate. By the way, you have a problem with something that they're doing, and yeah. then all of a sudden, well, yeah. you hate that one group, and you hate all the other alphabets that go with it. I will say this: I do hate. I do hate. It's, I, I hate drag queens at schools. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do hate right. those or libraries. People. Yes, yeah, or libraries for kids. You know, for kids and stuff. You know, or the Burger King Kids Club. Well, I don't mind it if you could just stay in uh, stay in your other costume and just teach history. 
That's fine. Or math or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. have to bring your uh, bar life to the kids. Yes, exactly. It's, it's very fair. <laughs> How old is it ever bar know life? <laughs> but you're all missing the point. Let's just blame Whitey anyway. Always find some way to hate Whitey. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Right. Mayonnaise. <laughs> Let's go. Egg salad. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> just, we I smell. Foods. What is it? We smell like chicken. What is it? The black people say. No, we smell like wet dogs. We smell like wet dogs. That's what they say. We smell like wet dogs. Maybe it's true. They all. If you if you ask a black person that, they will laugh and like smile because they. It's true. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to yeah. stop it. But and I'll tell you what. We do smell like wet dogs. A lot of black men smell similar because dogs. they use the same products. And I really, when I went to a barber shop, it's like coconut oil. Yeah. In their beard and their hair, and so a lot of them have the smell of the, the, the product that they use. Huh. I'm sure white people use very similar hair products, and so we pro probably all have a similar scent. Mm -hmm. It's okay. The differences <laughs> are beautiful. That being said, I will never put <laughs> coconut oil and alcohol in my beard again, like they did at the barber shop. Ah, it's nothing. <laughs> because I have a long line of Northern European ginger skin. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I appreciate the sense of thing. I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I went, when I went to the barber shop, they were like. Man, you gotta trim up. You gotta trim up your beard line. It's just letting it grow all however it does. So then I trimmed it, and then I was like, "Just do me like, just don't put anything in it because you know I, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah. like you know ginger sensitive skin." He's like, "Nah, just coconut oil and alcohol." I'm like, "Oh, those sound <laughs> like two things that you you can handle." And my skin broke out in oils. <laughs> those are definitely things. Like I said gremlins. Those back are things that got wet. All right, <laughs> let's go to another claim. That rural whites are conspiratorial. They're the most conspiracist group. QAnon support and subscribers, election denialism, COVID denialism, and scientific skepticism, Obama birtherism. Before anything else, that man takes off his glasses, and I bet you it's... <laughs> I can see your face. He has no eyes. <laughs> yeah, those people, like in a cartoon. Here's the truth. No. <laughs> No, no. QAnon nope. is a small, it was a small fringe group, not white rural America. There's a poll from NBC that found that more than 50% of the people polled had no idea what QAnon was. Only 3% <laughs> at all had a favorable view of QAnon. <laughs> it's pretty soon. Look, we've got some other data, by the way, on QAnon. Bring some of those things up that you were showing me about the, the racial mix-up. So the ra racial composition of QAnon believers and non-believers. White, black, Hispanic. There was another one that had Hispanic, black, and then white kind of in descending order there. There you go. Oh, yeah, there you percent go. Percent. percent. Conspiracies is true. Hispanic and black people actually outweigh white people. As far as percent, this is just at least one <laughs> yes. of the conspiracies. Yeah. One of those conspiracies is true. And by the way, hey, oh, wait a second. You mean that black people might believe that a system is rigged or that justice isn't always served? I wonder There's why. also nothing wrong with you have told them that systemic racism exists, and so they right. should be conspiratorial. Yeah. Let's be clear about that. Hold on a second. Just the fact that you view as government... Uh, you view government, sorry, as inherently perhaps untrustworthy. Have you been awake this morning? I mean, we want to go what the other conspiracy theory that YouTube says is not a conspiracy theory anymore. The 2020 election denial. Well, hold on a second. It's legitimate to, to doubt in when there have been no audits conducted, when they've changed their state constitution, when they try and disqualify a candidate as they're doing now in violation of the Constitution. And just to be clear, when people say, oh, all these cases that he lost, no, most of those 2020 election cases, they were thrown out. They weren't decided based on evidence. Only 31 of the 92 cases were decided based on merits. Also, President Trump and or the GOP representatives, by the way, they, they, they did prevail in 23 of those 31 cases Which that were no, seen on merit. No one talks about that. They say 61 cases thrown out. Yep. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What about the 31 where they actually got to the evidence and merit? 23 out of 31 is a pretty damn good ratio yes. when you're dealing with courts. You can't get 23 out of 31 to convict a murderer who said, I did it. <laughs> Conspiratorial? Hey, Hillary Clinton questioned the outcome of the 2016 election, just yep. to be clear. For how long? <laughs> still. <laughs> to today. Still. What is today? <laughs> you know who else still? Other non-white person and planet, Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams, she still hasn't conceded the 2018 loss to Kemp. Votes remain to be counted. There are voices that were waiting to be heard. Is that the Abrams tank? Across our state. No, it's the lesser <laughs> Abrams. Oh, the lesser. Shit, my bad. In absentee ballots. And we believe our chance for a stronger Georgia just is cannons. just within reach. <laughs> <laughs> but don't don't forget this: it, the, the day democracy died. I heard this this weekend. The day democracy died. Guess Bush what, Gore. What day was that? in Florida? Yeah. They're still going back to that, and that was an audited. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> like, how, many, like, how many times, too? It was like three or four times, was, right? And it was done very quick. It's, it's weird how you can get these things done very quickly when you need to, other than like Pennsylvania counting votes for 20 days or so and after the election, whatever it was. It's yeah. ridiculous. They want, and they want to throw in there, right, an anti-science? Okay. Oh. Again, if you're going to talk about people who yeah. are anti-science, meaning the science that you establish, or if you want to talk about people who are just anti-vaccination in general, um, <clears throat> guarantee you the demographics, the racial demographics, aren't going to line up how you think that they do. Okay? <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true, right? Most of my black friends are not vaccinated. No, of course not. <laughs> Wait, why would you say that? We weren't. We didn't say a race. I didn't say <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I, ain't a, I ain't no bitch. <laughs> no bitch. Shingles and shit? I ain't no bitch. (laughs) So what's objectively true, we don't have those numbers. What is objectively true (laughs) is they're obviously meaning to suggest that if you are skeptical at all of uh, the mass COVID vaccination rollout. And by the way, not just the vaccination, but of course, the lockdowns, of course, the mortality rate, uh, the Imperial College uh, of London study. Here's what's objectively true. Okay, the COVID vaccination was not tested. The COVID shot injection was not tested like other vaccines. They changed, and by they, I mean the CDC, I mean established institutions, changed the definition of vaccine, just to be clear. That's from CDC.gov. Now, COVID, of course, was not fatal to most people, even though the policies were fatal to businesses, to be clear. It was a 0.03% death rate for those under the age of 80, something else that is completely undeniable. This is from VAERS. 171,000 Americans have reported adverse effects related to the vaccine in 2021. I don't want to bring you any information that I can't verify because these same institutions that change the definition have no interest in actually studying the effects. Right. And I believe that VAERS actually will say that the reporting system will actually say that typically it's around one in 100 actual cases is reported. So theoretically, you could multiply that by up to 100 times. Right. For the actual number of effects that have happened to people who have taken that. They want to say the birther thing. I don't even really need to get into the birther thing. It's a vast majority. Americans are not on board with the birther thing. Um, you know what? Here, yeah, I guess we, let me, let me, fit, let's go to the next claim. And then we'll have to go to Mug Club because I know we've gone long with this ruling here today. And if there's new information, we'll also cover this on Mug Club. Yeah. The claim that they make here that rural whites, it's just so, you know, we, we were preparing this segment before the program today. And we were, we were ready sort of. <clears throat> in standby for the ruling to come down. And it's just amazing how these two mesh together. Where they try to say, again, today, this argument wouldn't work, but they made it a few days ago that rural whites are anti-democratic authoritarians. Anti-democratic sentiments. They don't believe in an independent press, free speech. They're most likely to say the president (laughs) should be able to act unilaterally without any checks from Congress or the courts or the bureaucracy. They're also the most strongly white nationalist and white Christian nationalist. Okay, before I hit the truth, just hit the truth tool, man. Look, I appreciate you being with us today. None of this happens. We have some investigative uh, uh, journalism pieces coming down the pipeline. Uh, We're going to continue for an hour. So if you want to join Mug Club, it's $89 annually. Lottoscredit.com slash Mug Club. You can try it mugless for a month. You'll get this additional hour of show here today. You get Nick DiPaolo every day. You get Brian Callen. You get the Hodgkins, Mr. Gunsgear, Alex Jones on Friday, this program on Friday. And none of this happens. There is no free program period at all. Without your support, there you go. Well, you can hit the rumble button right there and join as we continue to mug club and take your chats. But the truth here, <clears throat> and today this is important, it's obviously complete and total bull, right? Let me, let me just give you the broad strokes. Conservatives, certainly everyone in this room who is reasonably conservative, libertarian, right-leaning, want smaller government, more states' rights when appropriate. They want less overall regulation, bureaucracy, lower taxes. Let's contrast this with the left. He just said that the... It's the American white, the rural white voters. And of course, they also mean largely male who want to censor the press. Okay, first off, you have people who are in positions of authority, right? The the Bidens, the Kamala Harris's of the world, the DNC. They have uh, have persecuted political opponents, to be clear. They have attempted to pack the Supreme Court, and they will continue to attempt to do so. They have limited speech in what is permissible on public platforms, right? So that's the people in authority. There's no doubt about that. And you have not seen that. From the right. <clears throat> but let's also, and I rarely do this, address the people who are voting for those in authority, meaning progressives at large in this country support policies. When we're talking about authoritarianism, you compare the right, lower taxes, less government intervention, freedom, as long as it's not negatively affecting someone else. The left votes for policies to determine what you eat, meaning 
Whether you can eat meat, how much meat, the portion sizes of what you eat, what you drive, if it's eco-friendly, if you need an electric car, if you need a car that gets 30 miles per gallon or a hybrid, when you can fly, if you're talking about carbon offsets, you're talking about uh, carbon credits that you can purchase, which of course can only be purchased by the elite, what kind of school your children can go to, because of course school choice is something, something, something racist, shut up you white rural voter, where you can bank or how you can conduct business because of all of these institutions who ban people simply because of their point of view, whether it's Shopify, whether it's Patreon, or banks freezing private individuals' accounts. And again, you look at uh, what they would do if completely unfettered, see Canada with the truckers, how you can employ people, what kind of questions you can ask, what kind of level of propriety you can actually set in your workplace. Think They want to control every single aspect of your life as a matter of legislative policy at all points outside of not murdering a baby, in which case they're all about freedom, my body, my choice. It's the only exception. And drugs, black tar heroin. But the good news is you have a lot of conservatives, libertarians who uh, want to end the war on drugs as well. What you eat, what you drive, if you can fly, what school, what bank, what you have to provide to every single employee, even if it's a violation of conscience as far as birth control. Think about when they say that white rural Americans are authoritarian. Do you guys remember Michaels? This is back when Sandra Fluke was, you know, talking about birth control. Michaels, I believe it was Michaels, or was it Hobby Lobby? Hobby Lobby. It was Hobby Lobby. Hobby Sorry, yeah. Hobby Lobby. It was Hobby Lobby provided, if I'm not mistaken, it was either 16 or 18 to their employees, methods of birth control out of 21. They said, we won't provide these other ones. We won't pay for them for our employees, even though we offer health insurance, because it's a violation of conscience. As a Christian company, we believe they are abortificants. The other ones, Sure. 16 out of 21 or 18 out of 21 going by rote and 100% certain that one of those numbers is correct. And the left says, you are an authoritarian if you do not subsidize 100% of every single form of birth control that we demand, even though we willingly took this job with this company, knowing the policy. And then they'll accuse you of being authoritarian. Hold on a second, wait a second, wait a second, hold on a second. Conservatives say, yeah, yeah, hold on. We so believe in freedom of speech. We so believe that the digital town square needs to be kept open, that companies, that, that Rumble had to be created, and Elon Musk had to buy Twitter and turn it into X at the same time that Jen Psaki was calling on Spotify to censor Joe Rogan. You are such an authoritarian that today we bemoan the fact that the Supreme Court in a 9-0 decision stepped in and said, Colorado, you can't take the guy off the ballot who would win today. You're the authoritarian. You, the white rural male voter. Is any comment, is anyone buying this shit? Is genuinely at this point, because I understand there are disagreements over policy. Is anyone actually buying this shit in 2024 that the people in here are authoritarians and not the cavalcade of communists that you see on CNN right now, including, bring them up right now, Wolf, lowest score ever in the history of Celebrity Jeopardy <laughs> Blitzer? If, if for no other reason... Is that true? It is 100% true. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Ever. Ever.